Howdy, Saints. A uh, little dark out here this morning. Uh, it's it's 4.40 a.m. here. And I'm out on my front porch, you know, what I usually say it. Uh, you know, Brother Zach, I, mean, I share his emails when I get them, and I share a lot of teachings from Brother Zach as well. Uh, he is about the most soundest man I have found in God's doctrine. Uh, Brother Zach has a lot of teachings on uh, the tongue and the damage it is and how we can bring it under control and how we can allow it to be bridled by the Holy Spirit uh, because if our tongue is unbridled, uh, we're told our religion is in vain. Our religion is vain. An unbridled tongue means your religion is useless to God. Uh, he also teaches a lot on unity. Uh, and and, and y'all know that I've spoken on, on unity a lot uh, because uh, God, that's what he desires. I mean, the Lord Jesus, King Jesus, Lord God, Lord God, Christ Jesus, whatever you want to call him, uh, prayed for unity. That was his prayer. Now, I got to I gotta look at when the Lord prayed. I really think I need to pay attention to what he prayed for, like I do Paul in his prayers. Uh, I, I've studied Paul's prayer uh, to become a, a, an effectual prayer. Uh, so, when we look at the Lord, when He prayed in John seventeen, He prayed for He prayed for unity. Unity. Now, a lot of folks will teach this. This is their doctrine. As long as we believe in the cross of Christ, we're in unity. That's a lie. That's not found anywhere in Scripture. Unity is so much more than just believing on the cross of Christ. God said, I shall love you when you receive and keep my word. Keep meaning to understand. So it's just believing. Is that the unity? No. Paul says, I taught, the same, I taught one doctor everywhere I went to everybody I, I, I visited and I spoke to. I taught one doctor. We are to be in unity and doctrine as well. Yeah, because this is the thing. If you're a oneness person, you're calling those that believe in the works of the Trinity, three working as one in unity for one purpose. You're calling them a liar. If you are a stand on Trinity alone and you denounce oneness, I'm the father of one. We all work together for one purpose. You're calling them a liar. When both of it is scriptural, there is a oneness, and there is Trinity. Uh, there is, I don't see. Here's where it is. It's not. It's not the Trinity. It's Trinity, the doctrine of Trinity, not the doctrine of the Trinity. There's where a lot of people have issues. The art of language has been lost. Y'all heard me say that several times as well. So. If, if you're that one or you're this one, you're calling the other one a liar. Guess what? You're not in unity. Baptisms. Physical water baptisms. We have people saying that you need to be physically dunked in water. That is part of the one baptism. They are calling the ones that preach and teach one baptism, the one that John the Baptist spoke of, he says, he that is coming, 
he shall baptize you. You know, Jesus didn't baptize nobody while he walked on this earth. See, John knew there was going to be a different baptism coming. So, if you teach needful water, physical water baptism, you're calling these that believe in the one true baptism, baptized by him alone, not man. Because really, do you know for certain if that man is a man of God that's dunking you in water? Heck, that might be a minister of Satan, appearing as an angel of light that preaches righteousness, but don't teach it. That might be a minister of Satan dunking you in that water. So, here again, unity. We had to be united in doctrine. One doctrine, not a theology of man. Okay. And, and uh, some people just can't grasp that. Well, you know, theology is vital. Well, you know, okay, I, I, would, I would take that as being true if, if, and only if, you can show me the one theology that aligns completely 100% with God's doctrine. Okay, so you can't do that. There's one doctrine. The Lord said, this ain't my doctrine. This is the doctrine of him that sent me. There's God's doctrine. The Apostle Paul, it's that doctrine, that one message he taught everywhere he went to, everyone. He never changed it. He, when he went to the Jews, he didn't change the doctrine to them. When he went to the Greeks and the Gentiles, he didn't change the doctrine to them. He taught one doctrine. What doctrine? Our gospel. Uh, God loves everyone, that doctrine. If you teach God loves everyone, and then this person over here is teaching, God shall love those who receive and keep his word, like we find in John 14, you're calling them a liar. Unity is not there. Unity in doctrine. Paul tells Timothy, stay in the doctrine, and in such you'll save yourself and those that hear you. In what? The doctrine. We have to be in unity in doctrine. Now, does that mean that everybody knows 100% what God's doctrine is? Well, no. There's many babes out there that are unskillful. We've talked about this. They're babes in Christ. They're unskillful. They're still walking in the flesh. Well, really, you know, 90% of their time, they're walking in the flesh because they're babes. And there's no one there to guide them down that road, teach them to learn to ride that bicycle without training wheels so they can go on the path on their you know, own at, at times and stand strong. Become the young man that John talks about, First John, strong in the word that abides in them, and have learned to overcome the wicked one. Now, these folks have not been, they, they haven't grown up there yet. They haven't become that perfect saint that Paul teaches us in Philippians. You know, them perfect saints are in unity in doctrine. The mature saints have come to unity in doctrine, and the reason is because they have been given understanding. You know, I said it the other day. There, it's interesting that God says, let the ignorant be ignorant. Very interesting in that. Well, you know, that kind of goes against what man says. We need to beat them with the Bible. We need to feed them the Word of God. God says, let the ignorant be ignorant. And this is why. God has given us everything needful. Everything needful as not to be ignorant. If you choose to remain, be and remain in ignorance, which means being unlearned, if you choose that, that's feeding the flesh. You're not walking in the Spirit. The reason God's Word has come alive to me though many years back, is because when I read it, when I read Paul's gospel, when I read our gospel, them words struck 
in my heart. <coughs> be not ignorant. I would not that you be ignorant. Don't be ignorant. And then one struck deep in me, and I, I, I went to the father and said, okay, for one thing, <laughs> calling people ignorant nowadays gets you in trouble. Uh, yeah, that could be called hate speech. <laughs> uh, God, I don't want to be ignorant. I really don't want to be ignorant. I want you to explain to me, first of all, what it means not to be ignorant. Excuse me. What it means to be ignorant. <laughs> Explain to that me first, and 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 then and then show me how not to be ignorant. And you know something, God has promised this: if you ask, you will receive. If it's in His will, you know something. One of God's will is, I'm pretty sure that you don't be ignorant. So unity, unity is more than. We just, hey, as long as we believe in the, in, the, in the cross of Christ, we're in unity. Well, yes, you're in the, you're a member of the body at that time, yes. But you know what's going to happen to a lot of members of that body? The Lord said, gouge out that member and cast it away from you. Cut off that member and cast it away from you. Paul says, put away from you that wicked person. You may be a member of the body, but because you're not observing God's divine order in his doctrine, if the Lord says, cut them away and cast them away, and God, and look, when Paul said, put away from you that wicked person, okay, that's not Paul telling us that. Paul had them words scribed when he spoke. But this is the thing. When Paul said, put that wicked person away from you, that's God speaking. So, are you in unity in God's doctrine? I've lost my whole family. They church folks. Yeah, they church folks. Uh, and, 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 and they go to church and they tie and do a bunch there you go there's another thing unity if you believe in tithing you're telling ones that don't believe in tithing that teach second corinthians 8 and 9 that tithing any obligatory commanded giving to someone is a sin you're calling them a liar the unity uh the, there are a lot of people out here calling each other liars. They should be trade up. I'll call you a liar if it don't align up with God's word. It's that simple. To be uni in unity. To be in unity. To be united. Okay. What was I at before I got off on 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 that one? Uh, oh, I lost my family. My whole family down there where I grew up. All my cousins, man. I, I grew up with these folks. I loved them. My aunts, my uncles, loved them. My pop, my mom. Well, not my mom, because my pop and mom are divorced. I lost my mom for another reason. She hates my wife, which is one of the most greatest blessings I ever got. My mom will still put down here in this house because of her. Uh, reason being ain't important. It's a, a forgiving heart. Uh, she has forgiven her. I don't know why, but she just don't have that. So I lost my mom over that, but, but my pop side of the family, I have a cousin that is in a uh, same uh, uh, type relationship with a person. You know what I mean? I ain't going to say them words, but you know, she likes she eats. And, and they, they rejoice with her in you know, uh, she comes to family reunions, and she does this, and she does that. She professes to be a sister in Christ, both of them. Uh, and, and I tell them, I just couldn't be a partaker with that rejoicing, that boasting that Paul speaks of in First Corinthians 5. Y'all are boasting. I can't be a part of that. 
I'm not going to be a partaker in another person's sin. I'm not going to do that. Uh, and and so I, they just, you know, lost me. And and my stepmother, <laughs> she made a post on Facebook. It was funny. Uh, she 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 quoted God's word. <laughs> well, if they left us, they was never one of us. And you know, I sure have left that world. But the thing was, I was one of them one time. She uses God's word to feed their flesh, and and that's just the way it is. Uh, my pop, uh, uh, according to man down there, he is like a hero. He is a dumb man. Everybody knows my pop, and it's actually a lot of people know my pop in the whole state of Arkansas. He was in a position of power to where he influenced a lot of people, and a lot of people came to know him. And I'm pretty sure the day he dies, there's going to be a big funeral. Oh, yeah, they're going to be talking highly of this man. Highly the same man that I asked one time, Hey, Pop, come in, you sit down with the Bible, talk about God. And he tells me, You worship God your way, I worship Him my way. See unity. Because the Lord said, There's one way to worship God, and that's truth of spirit. And I try to explain that to my Pop. So, unity and doctrine. It, you know, it's yes, it is the cross of Christ that brings us as we become members of the body, but it's the doctrine that unites us. Yeah. It's the doctrine that unites us. Now, we're a member of the body. Remember, it's not like in the older days when the Holy Spirit came and went. We're sealed now until the day of redemption. And on that day of redemption, you're going to be found out either you're going to be a sheep or a goat. Did you listen to the master's voice? Or did you not? A goat is not one who is not sealed. A goat is someone who is sealed somewhere in their life. And they stopped listening. They listened. And their heart was pricked. And they had a redemption. They had a godly sorrow of redemption. But then the snares of the world caught up in thorns and thistles, that pressure from outside world, like my, my family down there, my pop side, that pressure. You know, I could say, well, you know, I'm supposed to love them and, and, and partake with them. No, no, I'm not supposed to fellowship with them. So, unity. Brothers and sisters, this unity, if, if it wasn't important, the Lord. God himself. Remember, pray for this in John 17. See, here's another doctrine. Well, everything that's said is for the covenant, the new saints covenant. Well, it's profitable, yes. But even in the prayer, in the, in, in the, okay, the Lord's prayer is John 17. That's actually the Lord's prayer. And, and, and in this, we see him pray for the apostles, Father, I pray for them that they be as, in, as one as you and I. And I don't pray for them alone. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't pray for this world. You know, we got a lot of people praying for the world. And nowhere in Scripture do we see that. He said, I not pray for them alone. That's speaking of the 12 apostles. But I pray for those who will believe on me through them. That, that's me. Prayfully, that's you today. Uh, and the Lord prayed for me. Oh, Andy Terry. He prayed for me. Wow. Man, dude. Now, if <laughs> God, that is that is some amazing stuff. So, when we pray for the saints, like we're told to, and we're shown, I've yet to find a prayer for someone who hates God. Now, we have a lot of people praying that. Lord, save my grandson. Lord, save my soul. Like the Lord's going to say, you know something? I'm just going to put him in a headlock and drag him into the kingdom. Just because you want me to. 
you know, we need to be in unity and a doctrine of prayer. Unity, unity. You need to understand the doctrine to be united. Yeah, if you don't understand doctrine, you're divided. Theology divides. God's doctrine unites. Unity. I tell you what. To me, I see the most blessed and precious day of your entire life is when you submitted to God. That's the, that's the number one day. You know what the next day I see as being the most important day of your life? When you denounce man's theology. When you go to God and say, okay, God, I've heard Anthony, oh, brother Anthony, he just keeps beating up theology. Now, I don't fully understand that, God, but you know, brother Anthony keeps telling me that theology is of the devil, and God, I don't want to be of the devil. So God help me out. See, that would be the second greatest day of your life. Some people say, well, when I met my wife would be the second day. No, when you became in unity in God's doctrine, that would be probably to me the second greatest day of your life. Don't get me wrong. My wife's a blessing to me. I love her. But she ain't going to get me into the kingdom of God. Mm -mm. I love her. I honor, honor means I find value in her, big time. But that's not what's going to get me the kingdom of God. It's receiving and keeping his word. Not keeping physically, keeping understanding. We can't keep it physically. We see that. That's our example of the old covenant. They tried it, it don't work. We have the new and better. The better part of our covenant is we have access to God's power. This is what I, this, this, I'll have you jump through the roof. You have direct access to the power of God. The one who created everything. You have that much power. Now, this is what I love about Paul. I'm going to tell you something. Paul had, he had, he had, he knew so much stuff it was unlawful for him to write about. And, and that's another, you know, I don't get on that path. But Paul had, knew so much, he said it was unlawful for him to even write about these things. He knew that much. And yet this man said, I still want to know more about the power of this resurrection. Wow. See, that's me. I want to know more about this power. Because, see, that power is the only way I can overcome my sinful flesh. That power is the only way that I can overcome my sinful flesh. Now, a lot of people don't like this word. That power is the only way I can overcome my sinful nature. The reason I know there is such thing as a sinful nature that a lot of people don't like is because in the same words of God, when he speaks about we've been given everything needful, his power, divine power, it also said we've been given access to his divine nature. See, I have a nature that's sinful. It's, that's why I need access to his divine nature. Uh, so, unity. Brothers and sisters, if y'all get anything from me out of my speakings, this is my prayer. And, and I, I'm going to tell you something. This should be your prayer to God, too, because we look at Paul. Paul always prays for a few things. Grace be abound to you, grow in the knowledge, and, you know, y'all go look at Paul's prayers, I'm telling you. He didn't pray that okay, all y'all be healed, and the <coughs> doors are going to open for financial success, and jobs, and all that call wash we see. He prayed for certain things, and these certain things united us. 
most of it was in the knowledge of our Lord God Jesus Christ. Paul prayed for these things. Unity. Because in that we are united. In that we are. And, and this is the thing. This is the thing. And I'm going to tell you. I, I, I'll tell you the, the God's honest truth right here. Do you know if you look at what God says about unity back in the Old Testament? With unity comes a commanded blessing. Not just a blessing. Not just a blessing. A commanded blessing. It says that the Holy Spirit, the oil, will run over this old man's hair, down this old man's beard, over this old man's clothes, and just cover me. A commanded blessing. Unity. So, uh, Skeeters are kind of biting me a little bit. Neighbor just cranked up, so yep, it's five o'clock. He's headed to go down at the shop, have coffee with his old buddies. Huh? Hey, I love y'all. I'm always praying for you. And, and and if you got it, hey, if you ever want to chit chat, you know, just oh hit me up. Uh, and I'll see y'all next time around.